Hello, welcome again. Today in this lecture, let's talk about the psychology and ethics of testing. This is part of our fundamental testing, fundamentals of testing chapter and we are in the third lecture. So in the previous lecture, we talked about the principles of testing. So those are very important for you to really become a very professional software tester ingraining the principles of testing is extremely an important thing and this particular topic the psychology and ethics of testing is also very important introduction introductory concept that you need to understand well so what do you mean by psychology so when we develop software for creating software we need a particular kind of mindset and for testing the same software so that the end users and the customers of the software are safe to use the software we need a little bit different kind of mindset that is needed from the software testing professionals and that is the focus of this particular lecture today and also after completing the course when you join as a professional tester in any of the companies mostly you will be performing what we call independent testing. So testing performed by a team that is not taking responsibility of developing. So if you are working in any kind of independent kind of organizations, then you are guided by a set of ethics like the other functions which do independent work are typically your financial auditing in a company though the financial uh, officers within the company they create the company's uh, financial statements but they are not finally certified by the internal teams they have to be certified by external auditors before the statements go to the government so somehow independent testing also comes into that kind of function in most of the organizations today that's why we have to also understand some of the ethics uh, that we should be guided by. So this is the, these are the two things we'll talk about in this lesson. So as usual, let us start with a question before we get into the theory part of this lesson. So let us, all of us can have a question. If developers are developing software and with the right skills, time, resources, and mindset, developers would be able to successfully test their own code. And lot of cases, programmers actually do test their own code and they find many problems as well. And also they resolve them before anyone else sees the system. So if developers are already doing the testing, why? do many organizations have a separate specialized person or a team performing additional testing what is the need for this according to you so let us try to answer this question so what are some of the reasons that an independent tester or a test team may find more errors than if developers and users perform all of the testing so there are four reasons laid out there. You have to say whether the reason is the right reason or not. So our question is developers, if they have right skills, right time, if they can do testing and they do testing and they find a lot of defects in their own code and they fix it before anyone else sees. So what is the need for a separate independent tester or an independent test team. What extra advantages do these people bring? What are the reasons? That is the question we are asking. So the first potential reason we have to say whether it is yes or no is that it is difficult to find your own mistakes. Is it yes or no? Yes, it is yes. The problem with human beings is that when we create 
work or create some artifact, we can find some of the mistakes that we have committed. Then, first time when we read, we will find a lot of those mistakes in our own work. Second time we read, still we may be able to find some more mistakes. Third time, fourth time, as you keep looking at them, after a point of time, if you are the author of the document or author of the program, your ability to find your own mistakes will start reducing. Maybe we, the reason is that we fall in love with our own work. And all of us always say love is blind. Especially the work that we have created will not be able to see any more mistakes after a point of time. So that is why an independent team or an independent tester who doesn't have a lot of attachment with the software that you are developing may be able to find more errors. So that is a right reason. Let us look at the second one. Independence avoids bias from the author of the item being tested. So is it a right reason or not? Again, it is a right reason. Anybody who produces a document or a program has a problem of being biased by his or her own work. And typically, we term it as author bias. So whenever we are dealing with author bias, an independent person or an independent team will be able to do it, do the testing much better than the author himself or herself. So that is a right reason why independent testing teams might be useful. The third point is, it is often more efficient. Yes or no? Again, there can be kind of arguments about that. If developers themselves can find and fix, it will be much more efficient than if a team member outside the development team finds and gets them fixed by developers. It might take, it may need a little bit of workflow, it may need some time, but still the type of defects and with the objectivity with which testing can be done and also the quality improvement that can take place definitely brings independent testing as an efficient way to organize testing. So that is also S. Then fourth point, the reason for applying or deploying independent testing team, professional testers often have more training and skills in testing. Is it yes or no? Again, the answer is yes. Because if somebody got trained on how to do testing, they are more efficient at finding defects. They have the right skills to look at programs very dispassionately, independently, and ability to look at with very objective kind of mindset improves. That's why professional testers often have more training and skills in testing. Typically, the developers, they are having more skills and also training in how to develop programs, develop software. They may not have always the right skill to perform testing. So these are the, all the four reasons are right reasons why independent testing can be beneficial. So with that, let's go forward now and try to understand what it really means, independence testing. So as I told you, testing performed by a person or a team outside of the development team, that kind of model, we are calling it as independent testing. Testing done with a kind of freedom from the people who have developed, who can look at much more objectively at the software than those who have developed. So how do we define independence of testing? It is how to kind of separate the responsibilities between development and testing. And we can organize in variety of ways in which we can achieve a degree of independence. 
So independence is the degree of separation of responsibilities between the development and the testing. So how in variety of ways? Because independent testing requires a particular kind of mindset, the psychology. And that is why we are talking about it. But we will talk about independence of testing and organizing in variety of ways for degrees of independence, benefits and drawbacks of each type of organization. We will talk about this later in another lesson. But for now, just to give an overview of independence and how typically people achieve independence in variety of companies by organizing them differently. So if you have a team where a developer writes code and also takes responsibility for testing his or her own code, then there is no independence. So this is one way of organizing independence in a team by separating responsibilities of testing amongst different developers. But that gives only a limited kind of uh, independence. So other organizations uh, organize around independent internal test teams, meaning there is a development team and there is a dedicated internal independent testing team which doesn't have responsibility of developing software. They have only responsibility of testing the software developed by the developers. And these people typically they get trained, they have right skills to do testing. So that is another way of organizing development and test team and separating the responsibilities between them so that another higher level degree of independence can be achieved. And here the development team and the test team, they may be working inside same project organization. They may be re reporting to the same manager. So that can limit the degree of independence based on how the manager looks at the quality and testing related issues. But then some other companies to achieve higher degree of independence, they deploy testers that don't report into the project team, but the test engineers or the team of testers reporting into a business organization, totally different to different organizations. So because in the previous model, the same project manager supervises both development and testing, there can be some constraint of doing objective testing. So some organizations to achieve little bit of higher degree of separation of responsibilities, people deploy these kind of organizations as well. Independent testers reporting to business rather than reporting into the project management. And further higher degree of separation can be achieved when you can deploy independent test specialists. These are very senior people. They don't really report into any of the organizations. They are part of the same organization, but they are very senior people. They are very uh, thorough technical specialists. They have their own respect in the organization, so they don't really uh, are driven by any of the uh, development teams, politics or anything like that. So these people, that way of separating gives a higher degree of independence. And if you look at the way most of the organizations are doing today, is that if I am a company who outsourced my development to one development partner, I don't give testing to the same partner who is developing for me. I give it to another party, independent external test team. So once I am not within the same organizational boundary and I deploy specialists and they are outside, external to my own organization, the testing can be much more effective and much more objective. And that is that gives you the real highest degree of independence. So why we are doing all this type of thing is because we want to get over the author bias because human beings have this problem of author bias. So in order to achieve that, we are separating the responsibility of testing to an independent team. We are creating these possibilities so that these people 
really do thorough job of testing so that the software quality is improved. So, hope this has been useful. So learn and have fun.